All right, we're back, and I forgot what he asked. I forget his question. I don't know. Let's I think miss. it was the sun word. Oh, who is the high priest? It's Ziggy. <laughs> Ziggy. Obviously, <laughs> definitely. That accusation is false, Miss Bo. However, the high priest's identity is a carefully guarded secret, so your failure to identify him is nothing to be ashamed about. He was present at the museum party, but was rarely seen afterwards. One witness said he was spotted briefly in the office of Yvette Delacroix. Which museum employee runs a fencing operation as a sideline business? Wasn't that Ernie? That's right. Okay, let's go, let's go ahead and say it was... Olympia! Incorrect, Ms. Bo. If I were you, I would have looked through the garbage in people's offices. Trash cans are often a good source of food. I just love this. It's this giant fail for Laura. Ms. Bo, please remember in the future that you are a reporter, not a detective. By interfering in crime scenes, you make it much more difficult for the police to do their jobs. Not only are your conclusions based on unfounded guesswork, you don't even have any evidence to back them up. By your presence at the murder scenes and your destruction of evidence, I'm tempted to conclude that you were the murderer. <laughs> you neglected to thoroughly question all the suspects, and you missed important evidence at the crime scenes. Although you discovered the dagger of Amon Ra, you have not arrived at conclusions about the theft that make any sense to me. I believe the theft involved two people, one of whom must have been on the museum staff. Because of you, a murderer is running around loose in the city, free to kill again. I hope you're proud of yourself, Miss Bo. Oh. 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 Laura Bo bungles investigation! Dagger's still missing and killer goes Wait, free. What? Dagger's not still missing? She found the dagger. Yeah. Oh well. This is the aftermath. Since his skeleton was so nicely cleaned by the Dermistead Beetles, Dr. Carrington's bones will soon be hanging on display in the Lion Decker Museum. Huh. So, yeah, it was him after all in the trunk. Yvette Delacroix died plastered. Her remarkably lifelike statue now lives in the old master's gallery of the Lion Decker Museum. Her memory lives on in the minds of all she touched. Her sculpture is attributed to artists unknown. Huh. Dr. Pippin Carter, wherever he is, is quite displeased. You did not recover the dagger of Amon Ra- Yes, you did! Nor did you find his murderer. Therefore, Pippin feels it is only fair that he should haunt you for the rest of your life. What is this, Drupal? We found the dagger. Indirectly, as a result of your total failure, Wolf Heinlich was fired from his job as Chief of Security at the Lion Decker Museum. One year later, still out of work, he committed suicide in military fashion by falling on his sword. That's so bullshit! <laughs> Having died in the course of this story, Watney Little's life of crime came to an abrupt end. As he was not a nice man, nobody missed him. Good! After Walt Heimlich was fired from his job as Chief of Security, Dr. Olympia Miklos moved to Montana to do full-time field research in paleontology, digging in the rich fossil beds she found there. Her greatest find was the carnivorous Olympiosaurus dinosaur. Oh, well, at least she's happy. As fond as he was of the Lion Decker, Ernie Leach noted in his will that if he, that he wanted his body donated to the museum. His body now resides in numerous small jars of alcohol, which will be placed on display in the new Hall of Internal Biology, adjacent to the Hall of Late Mammals. Since the Dagger of Amon-Ra was not recovered, Dr. Potaship Tut-Smith was forced to commit suicide with a fake Dagger of Amon-Ra from the Lion Decker Museum gift shop. Jeez. After losing his head in the museum, Ziggy found himself unable to continue his criminal career. His head has been preserved and is now on display in the Life Mask exhibit at the Line Decker Museum. <laughs> Ramses Najir continued his successful career as an accountant and as head of the secret Egyptian cult of Amun Ra. With his strong high society ties, his accounting business made Ramses a millionaire in 15 years. Having died from a snake bite, the Countess Lavinia Waldorf Carlton did not live long enough to inherit any money from her last husband, Sterling. Extremely unimpressed by your total failure as a reporter, Sam Augustini fired you. Later the same year, he was mugged with the gift shop, gift shop duplicate of the Dagger of Amon Ra and died from his wounds. He blames you for his death. Since you were fired after your total failure at the museum, Crowdfaller T. Rhubarb continued the investigation, found the Dagger of Amon Ra and the murderer, and won a Pulitzer Prize for his excellent work. Henri Lemort, the coroner, continued his successful career studying dead bodies for the next 50 years, finally retiring in 1976 to tour with the rock band The Ungrateful Dead. Uh. 
Low Fat continued in the laundry business, eventually opening a chain of low fat Chinese laundries across the country and becoming a millionaire in the process. Detective Ryan Henry and O'Reilly continued his, in his job and became a full time homicide detective. Having amassed a small fortune by being frugal, <clears throat> he retired to Ireland three years later. Steve Dorian was quite upset by the unfortunate event that happened to you later that night. Stunned by your total failure and the unfortunate event that occurred to you later that evening, John Bow spent his remaining years in the New Orleans Mental Institution. After you gave it away, the dagger of Almond Ra vanished. Ah, oh, so it vanished again. Twenty years later, in 1946, it mysteriously appeared in the doorstep of the Cairo Museum in Egypt. There was human blood on the blade as if it were some kind of message. Oh no! Uh -oh. No! Laura! Is he gonna strangle us? You uh, had your chance and you blew it, it so up though. <laughs> Sounds like a robot. This, this is, is what happens, happens to interfering reporters. reporters. Oh my gosh! Oh, a bunch of rose petals fell on her body, kind of like an American beauty. I like how he crept up on her as if he was gonna strangle her, and then suddenly he just shoots her. Well, um, this is not the end. I don't want the credits to end like this, so I'm gonna stop the video here, and we'll continue on with the correct ending next time on Laura Bow 2, The Dagger of Amon Ra.